Hello. Welcome back. So, uh, this is our next episode of STEM Professional Chat by iSTEM Care. As you know, the purpose of this podcast is to bring career stories from STEM uh, about people who took unconventional career paths. We hope that the career journey roadmap discussion with professionals from the STEM community will be helpful for students, early career professionals to craft their own career journeys in this future. So, uh, today I'm Deepak. Uh, I'm joined with my colleague from ISM Care, Anurag. And uh, our guest for today is Dr. Amitavo Mitra. Amitavo, a uh, short background about him. Uh, so, he has a PhD in Cell and Molecular Biology from Dartmouth College, USA. And subsequently, he worked as a postdoc for two years at Dartmouth Medical College, USA. Before this, he earned his bachelor's degree from University of, North, of New Hampshire, USA in biology. Uh, subsequent to that, he started his second innings in his career as a patent attorney, wherein he advises clients on patent portfolio development, licensing, risk assessment, and analytics. Today, he has joined us to share his career journey and all the other exciting ventures he is passionate about. Welcome, Amitav. Welcome to this podcast. Thank you, Deepak and Anurad. So, uh, it sounds fascinating. Uh, so, first of all, I would like to know how, how are you feeling uh, where you are right now? Like, you know, after having this uh, tremendous journey of uh, bachelor's and master's and uh, PhD postdoc in the field of biology and now working as a patent attorney and a lawyer. Like, how, how has this journey happened? Can you just uh, briefly share your roadmap? Right. How it uh, has gone different? Yeah, I, I think if somebody told me like, you know, 10, 15 years ago that I would end up in law, um, I, I wouldn't have believed them at all, you know, and this is like, just out, just out of the wildest dreams that, you know, what I'm doing right now. Uh, but I think uh, while I was doing my undergrad and my PhD, I was very focused on doing something directly related to biology and being in academics. Uh, but uh, over the years, uh, towards the last couple of years of my PhD and postdoc, uh, I came to a self-realization that uh, like bench research is not something I want to do anymore uh, for various reasons. Uh, but at the same time, while I was exploring uh, other opportunities, I did want to stay in touch with the science because you know that's what I have been doing for like for a long, long time. And while I was exploring various opportunities, uh, someone actually mentioned to me that, you know, why don't you look into uh, patent law? That's a very up and coming field, especially back, you know, like 10, 15 years ago, it was still upcoming, it's still a very uh, open field right now. Uh, so uh, somebody uh, recommended to me and I started looking into it. And uh, one thing led to the other and I was in the job market, uh, something opened up for me uh, in India when I came back. And that's how I be uh, began my journey as a technical uh, consultant, if I may say, where uh, in, a law, in a law firm in Delhi, uh, Lakshmi Kumar and Sridharan, where I started in 2013. And uh, that's where I started, where I would uh, interact with various inventors who were across India and in other countries also. And I would, my role was to understand the science of the invention and then also interpret the law, the patent law, and then draft applications for patents. So that's how I got started. And uh, I was uh, really uh, curious about the whole field and content also, because I was still doing a lot of science in terms of reading, in terms of interpreting, maybe not doing bench work, but I was still able to keep in touch with science and development in the field. And uh, that was in the beginning, and uh, now it's been almost seven, eight years since I've been doing this. I'm a patent attorney now, uh, like I did my law, and uh, I gave the patent digit exam and everything. And now uh, I do more legal stuff, I would say, than like basic science. But at the same time, uh, I still, um, at, whenever I get a chance, I work with uh, inventors to you know really learn about their inventions, what they have done, and then advise them on how they can. Uh, protect their invention and monetize it. So that's in a nutshell how uh, my uh, progression happened from science to, you know, a more a more uh, non-traditional career, so as to speak of, in uh, patent law. And that that is a very fascinating journey. And uh, what fascinates me is uh, after living for more than a decade in US. 
what motivated you to come back to india and if there was kind of a societal pressure like which we like as a indian we face so if there was how did you tackle it and how did you like uh, convince yourself that you want to move from us because uh, the dream is always be in us but you were there for more than a decade so what motivated you for that right so see uh, to be very frank and to be honest uh, i did look for opportunities in the us uh, but i would say for various uh, i would say political reasons at that time you know after 2000 in, in the early part of 2010 and 12 it was very difficult for a lot of people uh, with who don't have a green card or anything to you know uh, get a job and i did not want to continue or keep doing a post doctoral fellowship now i'm sure everybody at least in us would know that uh, doing a post doc is a very easy and a sure shot way of continuing to live in us and i uh, often uh, the if you are in a high profile lab or a big lab they will sponsor your academic uh, h1b also which paves the way for you know the green card and everything all those were available to me but i did not want to go down that path of doing the 5 year 6 year old post doc and saving over something which i did not have my heart in it right so and at that time uh, in a lot of job opportunities nobody was willing to really interview people who do not have to have a job uh, authorization so a lot of the avenues were uh, not there anymore uh, outside of academics and uh, so one of the reasons i came back because in the time frame i had while to look for a job or something it did not work out for me so then uh, you can say i was forced to come back or i did make the active decision that i'm not going to keep fighting over in us i'm going to come back and look for opportunities in india also so uh, that was my reason to come back now secondly also over the whole like 10 to 12 year 13 years that i was there i never had the idea that i never want to go back so it was never my inten- it was never my intention that now that i have landed in us in back in 2000 that i'm never going to go back so i was always open to the idea and uh, of course uh, when i came back or when i was thinking of coming back to talk to your friends families or you know anyone uh, everybody wonders you know like you 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 went to us you've been there so long why do you want to come back so i think you know i don't have to answer to the other people but i have to be content with my decision as to why am i coming why am i coming back and also whether i can really be successful in india and i think uh, looking back even now uh, there are plenty of opportunities in india both in academics and in non academic fields and uh, i don't think there is uh, any con or uh, like it's advantage if you come back i would say and i think anybody who says that you know oh you are a failure because you did not make it in us and you came back i think it's not worth engaging those people so i think for me at least yeah. it never crossed my mind and everybody around me was supportive and even though the question that i was like you know i am doing pretty well i am happy and there are a lot of prospects and potential in what i'm doing right now so i don't think i am um, missing out necessarily in anything i might miss pepperoni pizza you know but uh, and i can't get a decent one in delhi but that's okay <laughs> i can i can i can live with that so uh, uh, that's what my advice would be to everyone that you know don't do not think of it as a failure or something that you are you could not make it in us so that would be in nutshell my uh, comment on that yeah no it is true it is true so uh, something that that i have experienced on a regular basis uh, which i think you uh, very well cleared is that a lot of these people particularly from uh, uh, developing countries go to so called developed countries with a hope to improve their uh, career paths so when they go there they generally go there with a post graduate course or a phd course or or something higher and then they are stuck in a dilemma that if in case i want to take a break change the course change my path then what will happen back home what will others say what will others think about me if they think that i did not make it through i am not successful blah 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 blah, blah. and this thought process actually happens in people even after they finish their phd's and post docs which mind you is like one of the toughest degree to sort of uh, go through uh, 
So even after achieving so much in life, people uh, have this thought process that maybe I have not done enough. Uh, so this this thing that you uh, said that you must not really pay attention to those people who put this negativity is actually a very valid thing, and I'm pretty sure that our listeners will greatly get benefited from that. Uh, having said so, uh, the other thing that I wanted to ask you is that since you've got a very strong background in biology and you work uh, for your PhD, you did your postdoc, so you had like extensive. Uh, bench work experience and uh, working in the laboratory in the rigid environment uh, in the rigorous time schedule and everything uh, now that you are working as patent lawyer for a decent period of time and you have sort of like you know very clearly changed your uh, career pattern do you miss it like going to the lab and the schedule that you had in the past do you miss it any time uh, see uh, i mean i i don't necessarily miss the doing the science uh, but being in the real world in terms of you know having a job and everything i would say that a phd is a very easy and a carefree life all you have to do is you know go to the lab do experiments and you know that's it you take some classes and you have no other responsibilities uh, time you have a lot of time in hand time is not a luxury so uh, i definitely don't miss doing the science but i think uh when we look at uh, in not just my a uh, profession but any profession i think uh, what anybody is doing in their phd whole lifestyle i would say is it's much easier compared to someone who's uh, in, in any professional industry so uh, yes it you know like when we are doing a phd it looks like the hardest thing in the world things don't work there is frustration and it, we are working in what ten hours 12 hours in the lab that and it appears that oh if i had a job it would be so easy you know i would have lots of money i would work you know i would have a good lifestyle but it's i would say um in hindsight uh, like the academics is a very easy thing you only have to do one thing which is the study and do your research that's all so i do miss that life which where i didn't have to worry about you know a million things or deadlines or because in 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 my job or in the, at least in the legal industry like time is a luxury right so uh, when in a phd time is not really a concern you know you can spend it is like as long time as it takes to you know do an experiment or do something so in in a, in in in, a, in the legal industry at least i would say that you know we still have to deliver the same results but uh, we don't have the luxury of time so there's more ad- this added pressure on you and of course uh, you know in a phd when you do an experiment whatever you're doing you can afford to fail right multiple times but uh, it's a lot less forgiving when you enter a professional field so you know i would say anybody doing a phd i would say like you know enjoy it it's not going to last forever the lifestyle <laughs> i i understand the difference between academia and uh industrial position or academia and career life and there are always going to be like uh this this life specific challenges or es specific challenges that will keep coming and when you are in a particular sector you will always find that that particular sector is the most difficult one and when you jump to a different sector you'll find that the previous one was actually easy and the new one is actually much more difficult but my question was specifically more relating to like the phd life and the postdoc life uh in terms of the laboratory environment in terms of like the pure sciences part of the work that you are actually doing to going to this particular field that you have currently chosen which is more of a derivative of that particular field it's not purely sciences but it is actually a derivative so what i wanted to ask is do you miss being in the core or do you enjoy being in the derivative mode right see i think uh, i would say that when i first uh, started my uh, professional career i did have these questions uh, and at uh, that time i really felt that i am missing science because i was familiar with science you know that is what i i have been doing for like 5 years 6 years and suddenly i was doing something else so those questions on i was out of my comfort zone right so of course i had those questions on you know is this really something i want to do uh, will i enjoy it will i be good at it what i'm going to do with this so all those questions were there but i think uh, after a few years uh, you know one once i fully invested myself in it 
and i was also at peace with it that you know it's not that i left it uh, because of some constraints i wanted to leave it it was a conscious decision and uh, then i you know also made the resolve that you know i'm not going to have any second thoughts because this is something i was asked by various people also you know what if you want to go back to science and i was like you know i don't know about law i don't i can't tell you right now whether i will not go back or not but i have made a decision to come out of it and i'm going to give it a my best shot to be good and be happy and learn something new so even now of course i you know it's been so long now that i have even forgotten what i did in the lab on a regular basis uh, but i think um, i don't have those doubts or uh, questions in my mind anymore that you know that this was bet- that was better or what i wanted to do yes initially those questions will always be there for anyone who's switching fields uh, but i think in i i wouldn't say those would be self doubts but it would be more of a fear of the unknown you know phd you have been doing similar thing for so long that you don't really know what else is out there or how you would fare in it and i think that slight fear is there but i i would say it would be you would question your decision or it's not a question of whether i love doing science and lab work and now i'm doing something else i i hope that makes some yeah, sense it it, it 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 makes much more sense it makes much more sense uh, uh i mean like because our viewers are always uh, like you know under this dilemma as to if i make this transition would i actually like what i'm doing in the future or would i miss the past so that is why i it was essential for us to understand from uh, people like you who had a, a big change in the career to sort of see whether after a big transition do you still miss the older part or are you actually very satisfied with the new part so that's why it was essential for us see i i would give another example see it's like you know when somebody has done a masters or a bachelor in india and then they decide to do a phd in us or anywhere outside india it's a big jump it's a big decision right everything is going to be different so even you know when i came over to us i had a lot of the self doubt questions you know will i be successful because everything will change will i like it or not so a similar situation happens you know when you are transitioning from a phd also and all those questions will come and uh, one thing uh, i would add here that the lifestyle we have as a researcher during a phd or even a post doc even if we continue in academic uh, or in a research industry it is going to completely change we still may be doing research but i don't think uh, in terms of lifestyle or responsibilities or some anything that we can really compare what we were doing during the phd and what we may do if someone gets a faculty position or if somebody is doing uh, initial research so uh, i don't think there is much comfort there uh, to say that uh, because if you continue in academics or you continue as a uh, industrial research uh is going to be a uh, lot predictable just like in your phd lifestyle yeah so yeah right. first of all i would i would relate yeah uh, uh thanks for the answer and i would relate with uh, what you said about uh, when you are doing a phd it feels like everything is this one if i had a job because i am in that stage i am in the final year of phd so i do feel like if the phd is not there i would be more relaxed and all these thing but i i understand what you are saying maybe with the time i will come to know uh, come to experience the same feeling um uh, i was just going through your linkedin profile and in your profile it is written that you have done a bachelor's in law also and which is very and and it was with uh, like you were working as well as for swing or degree so wanted to know for the uh, um, for our listener because if someone has to make a switch and do a degree in law so it it it, it is going to be a part time or a full time or do you have to also write some competitive exam or you can just directly enroll in the uh, law degree what was uh, the case with you right so see in my case in india at least i can say that uh, if you want to if somebody wants to be in the patent law field to enter it you don't have to have a law degree you don't have to be a patent agent 
and you are not hired basis your qualifications in law but if somebody wants to be in this field for a long long time and make something out of it it's absolutely critical to uh, get a law degree under your belt because you learn about the law also quite a bit because that's what you're going to be doing and also of course you would take the patent agent exam which allows you to you know uh, represent clients in front of the patent office uh, having said that um, in india uh, so i went to delhi university the faculty of law and they had a and there's a entrance exam for that for which i sat and i thankfully and luckily cleared it and it was a full time uh, program and um, at that time uh, the uh, faculty of law still had a evening session sort of where you know you would have classes from like 6 to 9 every day without any break so a lot of the so almost 70% of my class were actually working professionals in various fields and it was a full time program and almost everyone like i said you know had a job and uh, you do do the job and then you would uh, come and attend the classes in the evening and it's uh, something very similar in us also i ha- i have some friends who are now now also patent attorneys in us but also uh, lsats uh to uh you know it's, it's like the gre thing for law and then while they are working uh, they enroll in a law school for evening and that's how they uh do the degree so it's 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 tough uh, it's a tough three years uh because you are working full time and you're also studying full time uh so it's it's tough for three years but uh, that's what i think most people will have to go through at some point or the other Yeah, thanks for the answer. See, I would say even even I would say even after PhD, you can decide to law and then enter uh, the field, right? But you are going to be like what thirty two, thirty three by the time you finish your PhD in US, and then spend another three years doing law. So I don't think most people will have that luxury of you know, like staying another two three years at home while just studying and not having a job. So I think that's a limitation like most people have. that after a phd you know they get a job and then they do law or on the side yeah. right just just sort of personal curiosity since you already have a degree in law do you also visit the court and fight cases or the district court uh, yes I, i i do go to courts uh, they i i am in, in my current role i am involved in uh, litigation cases uh, patent litigation cases so i do go to court uh quite regularly at least when courts were open like a year back uh but i don't argue necessarily in the court because those the arguing role is uh is a very specialized role and it is limited to certain people who do it but i do assist in formulation of arguments uh but when i do have cases in front of the patent office there i am representing clients and arguing the case in hearings so in different forums different people can argue so even though i'm qualified and eligible to argue in front of a judge uh, but that's not my role is as of now okay nice 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 i mean like it is it, again fascinating because i still am trying to get over the fact that this guy has a phd and is now representing uh, clients in a court so <laughs> i'm still getting over that particular fact so anyways i i had to ask that okay so coming back to the main question that i wanted to actually know is uh since this is like a path breaking career of like you know uh, the the patent industry itself is like you know uh, is uh, is i wouldn't say a very new part but it's it's particularly for developing country like india it's it's a new component where a biologist is actually think of going into this uh, so if in case people have to think about this you being a patent lawyer now how would you like best sell this particular field like if you have to sort of give like a few pros and cons about this particular uh, field uh, how would you best uh, explain this to sort of an aspiring uh, candidate uh right so i i would suggest that you know anybody who's uh, looking out from outside into being a patent attorney first of all i would say that uh, this is a very hot field right now so as to speak of in india uh there's a lot of opportunities uh in the field and the domain as a whole there is sky is the limit 
So it's not that you know you will work for a few years and you will hit a saturation level in terms of your expertise and your career growth. So there is no bar soft for us to speak of. So that gives you anybody the you know the potential to really keep growing professionally for years and years to come. So it's a very broad field with a lot of opportunities. Uh, and uh, once you start doing it, you can all actually explore various tangents and everything where you may want to find your niche. So it's not that uh, somebody who enters this is always going to be just talking to inventors and writing applications. It's not that at all. There are various uh, related uh, fields which one can find their niche area. It could be analytics, it could be licensing, it could be like litigation, like I said. So again, there are a whole host of opportunities and uh, you wouldn't be pigeonholed into doing a particular thing for the rest of your life. So that uh, so that intellectual freedom is there, just like in a PhD where, you know, you can really explore uh, various areas. Uh, so that's one. And I would say if you are good, the pay is really great in this field. Um, so, and, uh, you know, there is uh, mobility also in the brain. You can, uh, if you have the necessary skills and expertise, you can move around. So I think based on that, um, I would say, and uh, lastly, I would say, you know, these are laws, these are man-made laws. So it's like someone like you and I, or someone who may be smarter wrote them. But, and it may seem very confusing in the beginning, but uh, what I always feel is that, you know, if doing PhD in life sciences, we are trying to figure out something, some natural laws and order. If we can do that, then understanding what somebody means in their written words is not hard. Right. And I think that is what I feel that, you know, because we, as a PhD, we have worked at such a high level in terms of finding out something which is unknown, that coming to this field, you know, all those skills are actually transferable and which make it somewhat easy, I would say. Yeah, perfect. I mean, like, I think, I think if I was to hear all of this, maybe I'm making a PhD, I would be completely sold to this concept of being a PhD. <laughs> yeah, See, I, and I, I think like what's really yeah. important, yeah. what's also important is that, you know, I would say six years ago, seven years ago, Nobody told me about patent law or any other domain for that uh, for that matter. But I think now, as uh, people are coming to know more and more about it, interacting with professionals in the field, I think they will also get confidence that this is something which is not an unknown. People are doing it. People are happy doing it. People are successful doing it. So it's definitely something to be considered. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, like if it's like a complete package, so definitely. Uh, it's, it's definitely a viable option for people uh, who have a background in biology, who've done a PhD in biology and are sort of not really interested in the bench work, but also are looking for something different, but still related to the field of choice. So it's, it's definitely a viable career option. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I would like to ask like, since you made the transition and and we hear a lot about like these day i'm hearing a lot about something called transferable skill that in phd you don't only learn the research skill but there are many transferable skills so you made a transition so which were the ma most important transferable skill which you felt were really helpful in making the transition and can you give some suggestion that a phd student can uh, hone their hone their uh, hone those transferable skill. What would be your suggestion for that? Right. See, I uh, I would say in a PhD, it's not about how many techniques you know, because you know anybody can learn that. But I would say the soft skills, which are transferable anywhere uh, to any domain, is that the ability to. Uh, go to uh, assimilate a lot of information and then having to form a hypothesis and then try and then logically going about uh, proving or disproving the hypothesis. We, I, you know, we do it in the PhD on a regular basis without even thinking, you know, we read like 20, 30 papers and then we try to formulate a question as to what, what is the gap and what's the noise, how do we get rid of the noise and then we formulate a question 
as to okay this is what i want to answer and then we have a plan on how we are going to address that question right so those kind of uh, skills like the thought process i have to identify your problem how do you go through a lot of data how do you manage your time that amount and how do you formulate a plan those skills are the are tr- readily transferable to any field even in the field of a uh, patent law where suddenly you have a lot of information in hand and you have to then figure out what is useful what is not because the inventor may do a data dump on you right he may give everything so the idea is for uh, the individual uh, to figure out what is important what is not what is the problem what is the question being asked or what question i should ask and then how do i go about addressing it and those are the skills which i think anybody or everybody learns in phd or they should work on it if there's a, if they don't think they are up to it and i, I think those are the soft skills uh, which at least i brought to the table when i uh, switched my career so you know if there's a lot of data or anything it didn't overwhelm me because I was doing that for like six years, anyways, during my PhD. But I would have a lot of information. You read twenty different papers, thirty papers. Uh, they may be conflicting at times, and then you try to figure out, you know, what's going on, uh, what needs to be addressed, and then have a, you know fact-based um, sequence of steps on how do you address it. It's not like you know you do an experiment in the dark and hope it hits something. You always have a you know a game plan. And I think. the ability to do those exercises really helps in me so those are the skills i would say uh, a person should develop and it will be really useful in any domain even if that person continues in sciences right 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 i think i think it's rightly put uh, if uh, these are the skills that you can if you can hone these skills during your phd or during your masters then uh it can be really applied anywhere whether you are continuing in biology or whether you are continuing in any other uh, you know part of the meeting career so this would definitely apply and it has worked very well for you so let's get to work for this wonderful uh i think this has been a very productive session uh learned a lot about uh, what you've done and how it helped you and i'm pretty sure that it will help uh, our viewers as well uh any any final take any final word of advice uh, maybe also uh, if you can give some guidance on uh, maybe some internship opportunities or some learning resources uh, i know that you've got a background from the us and india so maybe if someone wants to pursue the field of choice uh, uh, perhaps they can read in about this particular thing somewhere or maybe take up internship any government of said so if you can direct on that and uh, help Yeah, I think when we talk about patent law, whether in India or in US, there's a lot of information on the web available. You know, if you put in patent law, like there's a wealth of information out there. Most of it is pretty accurate. So, and also, if somebody looking for, you know, some kind of mentoring or internship, uh, one can, or and you know, especially with LinkedIn, you can find out, you know, who's doing what and where. and uh, i think if you reach out to people over linkedin uh, more often than not they reply at least in you know positive or negative whatever the case may be and i would say the best way is to uh, talk to people in the field and try to get an idea of you know what is the general consensus because every individual is going to have a different experience some may like it some may not like it but i think with the advent of technology and accessibility to people over social media uh i think uh, uh current students or somebody who's doing a post doc can make a very well informed decision on whether uh, this is something for them or not and uh, of course unless you do it you know you would never know but i think uh with the information and access to resources and people out there i think anybody can make a pretty good informed decision on whether this is something they want to do or not so i think all the uh, resources are there in terms of information just in terms of static information and also people in the field i think uh, you know you go to any linkedin you look for patent agents or anything i'm sure you will find people in your network you know who are in a particular domain of interest and uh, these days it's very easy to you know start a conversation with them and kind of get to know their history and their motivation 
and then you know if you find something which is common then you can decide do you should do it or not right 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 i think it's rightly put because uh even if you had given some government resources or any other uh, websites i think that actually gives much lesser information than actually attracting the people who are in the field so uh, it would, it will definitely give uh, the potential aspirants uh, much more information to speak with experts in that particular field uh, through linkedin through uh, twitter or any other social media channel and then i think they can make an informed decision of whether or not to do this course having said that uh, like if if you are open to it uh, where where can potential uh, like you know listeners reach out to you if in case uh, they want to talk to you they want to get guidance from you like which is the best resource that is um, most effective yeah so i mean i am on, i am on linkedin so i think that's the easiest one i'm quite active on it so i will uh, reply it may not be like immediately but i will reply to them within like you know 24 hours or so so i am there on linkedin Uh, on the form website my uh, email is there and i think if anybody googles me they they might also find my phone number i mean it's scary but i just probably out there <laughs> so, <laughs> i may not pick up a unknown number that's a different story but i think you know like uh, there are a lot of ways uh, to get in touch with me and it's all of them are quite easy okay okay we will we'll certainly put your linkedin handle on uh, uh, the youtube link Yeah, perfect, perfect. And you know, my email is also there from our our website. So even if somebody makes the effort to, you know, go to the law firm website where I work, uh, my profile is there with the email, so they can reach me by email also. Right. Okay. okay. So yeah. So thank you, uh, thank you, Amitabu, for sharing your exciting journey with us in our virtual studio and. Uh, enlightening uh, the listeners about this uh, path breaking uh, breakthrough career and we uh, we we thank you uh, wholeheartedly for this participation thank you yes, thank you so much thank, thank you, you so much us. for giving me the opportunity yeah it was wonderful Thanks, i think guys. the pleasure is ours uh, it was wonderful yeah